welcome in. It is day 151, and you're speaking to the Meeples Champion. And today, we're going to be going over a game that I just played for the first time last night. It was a game that surprised me. It had kind of been on my radar for a few years, but it just, it seemed like it was a bit on the older side. It seemed like it was probably going to be from a similar area as games like Puerto Rico and Cuba, which were already close enough that I was like, I don't know if I want to play a third of that area. So it just kept on falling off. So it turns out I was massively wrong. It wasn't even from the same designer, company, any of that. It just so happened that the box used a lot of the exact same coloring as Puerto Rico. And as such, it made me just feel like that was what it was being compared to. The game we ended up playing was called Orleans. Now, Orleans is an interesting game because it takes a few aspects of quite a few different games. You know, one of the aspects is it's a bag builder. So much like my Wonderlands War game, it's all about building up what's being left in your bag. But at the same time, when you're laying down these different pieces that you're pulling from your bag, it's like workers. And much like in the Architects games, instead of being the Architects of the Western Kingdom, you're actually looking at Paladins. Paladins was all about getting lots of different colored meeples and placing them down in duos or trios and trying to be able to do an action based on the ones you've collected. Same exact thing here. You're getting your farmers, you're getting your wizards, you're getting your paladins, you're, you're getting members of the church, you're, you're getting this, I believe, seven or eight different possible people you can gather. And your board is designed that when you place people down, you're putting down two or three at a time, and you have to use combinations to be able to do an action. Now, when you do these actions, they come with multiple payouts. You might, you know, it's going to go over to a central board where you'll move your piece forward on that radar area, meaning depending on what you're doing, you might be getting money, you might be getting some kind of a food item, you might be getting a movement on the experience down below, but you'll also be getting another of the whatever's associated to it for your bag. So if you're moving up on the food, you're also getting a farmer because you're advanced in farming. If you're moving up in your money, then you're going to be getting somebody from the, the banking area. If you're, if you're moving up with your armies, you're getting a warrior. Now, when these go into your bag, everything that you spent, so if you've put three down to get your soldier, you're going to pull those three, plus you're going to grab your soldier and they all go in your bag. And then at the beginning of the next round, you're going to pull four, unless for every soldier you get, you're going to be moving forward on this. And eventually you can max that at a max of eight that you pull from the bag and can lay out on your, on the bottom of your board. Now, this comes with its own complexities because you can only pull as many as you're allowed to pull and as you have open space, which is a max of eight. So if you're pulling, you've got to be thinking ahead. How many can you pull from the bag? I want them all, so what am I going to do? Well, I should be making sure that I'm spending everything from last round. But you can't always spend everything. Just because you can't spend it doesn't mean you can't place it. So you can still take these people and place them above, prepping for a future move by placing, hey, I need a farmer, and I needed to have uh, a soldier, and I needed to have somebody else for up here. I had the farmer and the soldier, I just didn't have the third person, so those two are in their spot. And then whenever I get that third person, I can add them and be able to do the action at that point. So you got to think ahead for that. There's also a central board that is for everybody to donate towards. Now, this one's tougher. Everybody starts with four starter tokens that are in your color. You cannot use these here. You can only use the ones that you buy. As you buy them, there are two spots that you're allowed to place on. You place them here, and then you can only match them up to exactly what they are. The reason this matters is because if you were to invest in certain characters, or if you were to buy certain extra abilities, you can get wilds. Wilds don't matter on this board. It has to be a one-to-one -one reflection. You're putting the exact same thing onto its spot. If you get paid out something from it, you know, usually it's money. You might move on the experience area, but they're gone forever. You do not get those workers back. The reason this matters is because in the game, there are three main factors to how you make points. The first one is just money. It's a one for one. Every piece of money you make is an experience point at the end of the game. So you're going to end up being, you know, 40, 50 in money is 40 or 50 victory points. The second is going to be 
all of your different foods. There are five different food items that rank from five, four, three, two, down to one. And at the end of the game, you're going to count all those up and see what you have experience in food. And the third is a very interesting one because what this is, is that on the bottom where you're using that experience, you have star levels. So you start at one and you can max at six. You have to, you're trying to move up on that track, but at the same time, there's another central ward where you're going to be moving around the city of Orleans. You can move through the roads or through the water paths and you can go to the different cities and you can build your city in each of those cities. The center of it or the main, the, where you all begin, everybody can build a city. But beyond that, everywhere else on the board, only one person can build per location. So once somebody's built, nobody else can build there. And then on top of that, there are also these little people that you gather primarily from the central board, but also on the boards as you're moving across with your, every time that you get a soldier and you move up, at the end of that one, there'll be a person for the soldier board. At the end of the farmer, there's a person for the, for the farmer board. And at the end of the game, you take all your people, you take all your houses, you add them together, and you multiply them by your star level, and that's your third victory point marker. So somebody could have almost every house in the game, well, all their houses, everybody has their own, but they can have almost every person in the game. You could literally have all the people and all your houses and have 20, but have some one star and get 20 points. Whereas somebody else could say, well, I didn't get any people because you took them all, but I was able to get down half of my houses, but I got to four stars, so I also get 20 points. Or they could get all 10 of their houses down and end up getting just to three stars and they get 30 and they're ahead of you. So you have to do these three factors it's a game of balance. It's a game about paying attention to what's going on on your board, what's going on on somebody else's board. You all place at the same time, but when it's time to start, you literally have the first player do one action, and then everybody goes around and does their action, and then the next action, and then the next action. You have to be careful because when you're running into certain boards, you might notice, well, the farmer would allow me to grab a farmer, but because of the order of actions, they did a farmer move, they did a farmer move, they did a farmer move, we've run out of farmers, I can move forward on the chart, but I don't get a farmer anymore. These are the kind of things you're trying to track. It's a really difficult game to simply just wing it at, because there's a lot to be paying attention to. That being said, it was one of the most fun first game experiences I've had when I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting the game to be bad, but I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was. I loved it. Well, we've been going on for quite a bit. Why don't we jump in? We're going to do a real quick run through today and do our seven categories. We're not going to get too detailed. I think it's pretty straightforward on these. When it comes to the art, I hate it. I hate the art of this game. I think that the cover is bad. I do not like the actual art here, and I hate the coloring. It was what made me think of Puerto Rico, which as time has gone on, that board, that, that front cover has lost it for me. And inside the game, it's the same setup. There's nothing great about this. There's pieces that are nice, but it's a thumbs down overall. When it comes to those components, this game has really good components. You either are dealing with wooden components for your personal components that are going out for your houses, for your things moving on the charts, for your person who's out in the city, or with cardboard components, that are represented by the extra buildings that you can buy, that are represented by your money, your food items, or by the tokens going into your bag. And I think these are really good components. It's a thumbs up. For your price, this game is harder to get a hold of these days. You're not gonna find it in a Barnes & Noble or Target. You will find it in some board game stores, but it's kind of down to like two out of five at this point. And it's still expensive. I went online and saw if I could buy it last night, and it was $60 still. I would be willing to spend the money because I really liked the game, but do I think that a regular person should? Absolutely not. It's a thumbs down. It's too expensive. That difficulty. We have our four levels that we talk about. This is not for kids. This is not for beginners. Way too much going on. You're going to lose them. This is definitely for experts and definitely for experience though. And with that, you're getting at least half of the gamers you're looking for. 
really more than half because kids tend to be not really in the gaming area. I'm thinking of most of the time. They're a bonus for me. So for me, it's just enough, but it is a difficult game. So it's not one that even an experienced player is going to sit down and just know what they're doing. You're going to have to take a lot of time to get to know this one. It's a thumbs up overall, though. Your replayability. Honestly, had we had the time, I would have replayed this immediately. It's one that if it wasn't for the fact that I'm constantly trying to play new games for everybody out there for my channel, I would consider to pick for my week next time up. But because I'm trying to learn new games all the time, I have to hold off for right now. That being said, overall, where do I think the replayability for this is? I'm lucky. We have a group of five. We all know what we're doing. We are competitive in the game. That's not going to be the norm for most people for this level of a game. I think that this is not going to be replayed in a day, and it's an unlikely choice to get pulled out that often for most people that will actually have the group to play it in. So I have to give replayability a thumbs down for you guys, even though for me and my group, I think it does have high replayability. Your keys to victory. There were three. We discussed those. You can focus sale all in on your money. You, if you go all after money, you're going to do great. Or you can go all in on your food. You can commit to literally, I'm going to get the farmer. I'm going to move around because out on that area where you can put your cities down, every time you move, if you cross from city to city and there's food, you can pick one item to take. You can find ways to get food. And if you want to go all after that, there's a way. Or you can commit to the big one, which is, all right, I'm going to really spread myself out build as many houses as I can, try and get as many people as I can, and try to advance on that Star Trek. There are ways to go after all of these experience points, after all these victory point methods. You can mix them together. When I played, I took second place, and I was first, first, and third in those categories, and I literally was almost even all across the board. I played them very evenly. Compared to the winner, beat me by 10 points, but crushed us in money. More than half of his points was in money. So there are different ways to approach it. None of them are a losing way. It's just adjusting to those people around you. And that's the best way to do it. So I'm going to say thumbs up. Really good keys to victory. Is the game unique? Now, I compared this to quite a few games. And I do feel that it definitely has pieces. Even that point system I talked about of getting your star level up and multiplying it by other stuff to get your victory points, that reminds me of the, of the system for Scythe. There are pieces here. I don't think anything else compares to what this does as a whole. Being a bag builder that's also a worker placer that requires multiple workers to do actions, that has a central board for sacrificing workers, that has a board for moving around and placing cities and being in the town for collecting food, for collecting money, for dealing with experience points, for getting people. There's so much going on here. And while I can see aspects of many games I love, there is no game I can put head to head with this and say, that's a clear cut comparison. It's unique. It's a thumbs up. Overall, what do I think of this game? If you like bigger, heavier games, give this one a try. This is such a fun time. And I wouldn't buy it right away. It's very expensive. So if somebody owns it or if you have a chance to play it, do that. And if you like it, go spend the money because it's worth it. But don't jump at the money first because you need to make sure this game hits for you because it's too expensive for the game to either be you don't have the right group and you're not going to be able to play it very often. You end up not liking it. It's not the right hit for you or you love it and your group loves it. But it's just it's too complicated for you to remember the rules and you don't play enough. You've got to make sure it hits in all those aspects. That being said, it's up to you. Hey, it's your money. If you want to go out and buy this on the spot because it looks like one for you, do it. It is a great game. I really enjoyed it, and I think a lot of you will too. Well, it has been day 151, and we've been speaking about the game Orleans. And you've been speaking to the Meeples Champion. Like, share, subscribe, and check down below in the description where I'll be adding in an Amazon link in case you want to get this game for your collection. Until next time, I'll talk to you tomorrow.